Hey guys, welcome to, I'm going to try and do some post-race uh, post race stuff every once in a while. What a race in Atlanta. Holy cow. Was it, I don't know what got in the air, but that was one of the best main events that I've ever seen. I know Atlanta's had a few throughout the past and this ranks right up there. Other than Ken Rocks and just walking away. But first, I want to start with Cooksey Media and EBC Breaks. EBC Brakes has joined Cooksey Media, and to launch this, we are going to give away an oversized rotor and brake pads. The way you register for this giveaway is go to cooksymedia.com, go to the bottom, and there's a little sign up for the newsletter. Put your email in there. I'm going to pick a random email and go ahead and send out the oversized rotor and the brake pads. So let's talk about this main event. Ken Roxon wanted none of the garbage, got the whole shot. I don't even remember seeing him. They didn't really show him on TV. He was gone, and that's exactly what he needed to respond after last week. The track broke down, and I was, I was a little worried about him. Um, typically, when the tracks break down, he plays it conservative, but the way it worked out tonight, when he got the lead and the other contenders were in the back, it just, I mean, that was ideal scenario. Eli, oh boy, I thought we were going to see, as, uh, as some people call him, Levi or Elito, Either way, it's his alter ego when he rides and does ridiculous stuff. First couple laps, he was kind of just trying to sort it out, and it, it just gets crazy in the pack, especially with this many guys that are that close. Uh, and he just, him and Barsha have been like magnets. If I'm in Eli's corner, I go, dude, do not mess with Barsha. Get by him, get by him clean, and get away from him. He has the name Bam Bam for a reason. Don't mess with him. <laughs> He was so paranoid because he knew what he had just done to Barsha, and Barsha was coming for his head. He was not coming to make a clean pass. He was coming after Eli. So Eli forced the issue on Blake Baggett. Poor Blake Baggett. He's just squaring up the corner, and Eli just rammed him. I mean, what do you do? He was so mad. He's normally a very mild-mannered guy. Shoved Eli. That was that was weird. Um, it was out of character, and you could clearly see how mad he was. I mean, that really came out of nowhere. How about Martin Davalos? He was running second for a long time. Barsha passed him. He looked like he was going to hold on for the podium. He was took the white flag in third place, and the problem was is Webb and Tomac. These two dudes are – is there two worst guys to have behind you in the last lap of a 450 main? Yeah, that was uh, that was that was interesting. Uh I was afraid Martin was going to throw it away, and, but he looked like he sold a top five. It's something he can build off of. He has been crashing his brains out, and a little bit of confidence go a long way. So we'll see if this can kind of jumpstart it so he can be in that Justin Hill and kind of that third through right eighth battle, which is probably where he should be right now. So we'll see. And then Cooper Webb. My God, is there a tougher human being on earth? The crash he took was a crash that, that scares guys, that causes serious damage. He had some special magnetic thing to keep his, like his, uh, his hematoma from swelling. My God, uh, good for him. This is the kind of ride that would make Bob Hanna happy. This is a guy that straight gutted out the pain and put himself in a position to win the title overall. He didn't win tonight, obviously, but third place on a night, man, it was, it, Badass. Um, it's funny because myself and most everybody else on earth refers to the title battle as Tomac, Roxon, Webb. Guess what? Justin Barsha quietly 23, point, 23 points behind in third place. Good on him. Uh, he, he belongs there. So if Tomac thinks he can just move him out of the way like he's a lapper, clearly he's in for a fight. I just... And then I saw those two arguing afterward. Man, if I'm, I'm telling you, Tomac just needs to leave him alone. Don't battle with a guy nicknamed Bam Bam. Just leave it be. Um, kind of like what Sexton is doing in the 250 class with RJ. He's getting around him. He's doing it with authority. But he's got too much. He's going for a championship. He's not going for a one-night race win. You know, they've had that. He wants a title. So I think he needs to uh, reevaluate his, his priorities. In the 250 class... Chase Sexton has established. He's the guy. 
I don't understand why Star Yamaha put Shane McElrath. Well, let me rephrase that. I do understand why. I just think it was a horrible idea to put Shane McElrath in the West or in the East. He's one of the best hard packed surface riders, slick surface riders, West Coast dirt, probably of this generation. He's so good when, when the circumstances are like that. I mean, look at his record. When it breaks down, kind of like Atlanta, he's okay. I mean, he's not bad. I mean, he got third, but it's just, it's, I don't understand why they, I do understand why they did that. It frustrates me. I know they want the number one plate on the bike, but is it really that important? I mean, honestly, I mean, they won the title, they celebrated, they ran the ads last year. That number one on the bike doesn't really do much. I think it's more important to have a red plate. I think that actually gets more attention. So uh, they should have put him in the West and then put Ferrandis in the East. I think Ferrandis would cakewalk this in the East. Just my opinion. RJ Hampshire, he fought. He still doesn't look like he's on that level with, it's hard to say that because he just beat McElrath, but I don't expect him to do that regularly, but he's fighting. He clearly plans to be up there. So we'll see, we'll see where it goes. Daytona is an interesting one. I don't know, man, I don't know. Um, RJ is going to ride good because he's very good in the sand. He's very good in that dirt. He grew up in Florida. I don't expect McElrath to do anything better than third. Sexton's pretty good though. We'll see. He might. I think it's him and Hampshire at Daytona, but anything can happen. It's racing. Jordan Smith, what are you doing out there? That was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in the second time session. Jordan Bailey crashed. He was trying to go around him. Instead of taking the time to get around him clean, he forced the issue, clipped him with his foot peg, which is probably sharp as a razor. They had to stop it, red flag it, check on Jordan Bailey. Luckily he was okay and actually continued the session. But dude, it's a time session. Your lap was already screwed. Why you gotta do that? Thanks for watching. Don't forget, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Cooksey Media. And I'm gonna do these, these kind of post, post race videos periodically. Uh, if everybody likes them, hey, I'll do more. I'm not afraid to do it. So anyway, hey, thanks for all the support. I really appreciate it. Uh, CooksyMedia.com, Cooksey Media on Instagram, Cooksey Media on Facebook. Man, I'm trying to be all over. So thanks, guys, and uh, I'll catch you later.